Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how to use Photoshop Elements to fix the strange colors that animals' eyes sometimes change to in photographs. We'll see how to go from this to this. So let's go over to Elements and get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 11 for this video, but you can use other versions of Elements to fix this problem. The problem is usually caused from using a flash when the picture is taken, and sometimes the discoloration is white, sometimes it's green, but it can be almost any color. In the photo I'm using, my dog's eyes got kind of an orange color to them. But the color doesn't matter. This technique should work for any discoloration of an animal's eyes. And the reason is because it's the pupil that is affected, and luckily, at least as far as I know, the pupil should be black in all cases. Now we want to make a selection around the discolored pupils. There's lots of different tools you can use to make a selection. Since we need a round selection, I'm going to use a tool called the selection brush. With the selection brush, we can get our round selection with just one click of the mouse. Go over to the toolbox and find the group of tools that are labeled select. There are four tools visible in that section in the toolbox, but some of those tools share their spot with other tools. The selection brush occupies the lower right corner of the select group of tools. It shares that space with the quick selection tool and the magic wand tool. No matter which of the three tools is visible in that lower right spot, click on it. Now look down in the tool options at the bottom of your window on the left side of the Tool Options panel, you will see the icons for all three tools. The selection brush looks like an artist's brush with dotted lines around the brush. Click on that icon to make the selection brush active. Let's check a couple of other things here in the Tool Options. A little over to the right, there's a box where you can choose to use the selection brush in either Mask Mode or Selection Mode. We want to set that to Selection. Right below that is a brush thumbnail where you can choose either a hard edge brush or a soft edge brush. First, click on the Brush Preview and you'll see a set of brushes. You can see different brush sets by clicking on the drop down menu at the top. I like to use the set called Basic Brushes for something like this because it only contains round brushes. If your previews look different than mine, it's because there are different choices for how the brushes are displayed. You'll find those in the, if you click on the little arrow and four lines. So over here, just click on that and see that I have mine set to Small Thumbnail. The hard edge ones are these ones at the top part of the window that have sharp black edges and the soft edge brushes are the ones on the bottom and they have the feathered edges. The numbers under each brush indicates their size. I'm going to choose a hard edge brush by clicking on it. While preparing for this video I discovered a possible bug in Photoshop Elements 11 with the selection brush tool. Normally with a brush based tool when you click on a brush preview the tool automatically changes to the size and hardness that you select. Well, I notice that when I click on the brush preview for the selection brush, the size changes, but the hardness stays the same. Luckily, you can still change the hardness manually with this hardness slider. So I'll just click and drag the hardness all the way to the right so that it's at 100%. And you can see the brush preview change to reflect the hard edge. Next, let's zoom up on one of the eyes. I'll hold down the space bar and the command key on a Mac. That would be the space bar and control key on a PC. And the cursor temporarily turns into the zoom tool. I'll continue holding down these two keys and place the cursor over one of the eyes and click a few times. Now I'm zoomed in at 400%. Then I'll let go of the space bar and command key and my cursor changes back to the selection brush tool. When I place my cursor over the eye, I can see that it's a bit bigger than the pupil. 
To resize the selection brush, you can use the left and right bracket keys on your keyboard. They're the ones located right next to the letter P. Every time you press the right bracket key, your brush will get bigger, and each time you press the left bracket key, it will get smaller. Actually, that's good right there. And now I'll click once to make my selection. Next, go up to the Select menu and choose Refine Edge. The Refine Edge dialog box appears and we see a preview of the current selection. If you don't see your current selection, you can click and drag on the title bar of the Refine Edge dialog box because it might be covering up your preview. You can click on the View box and choose different ways to preview your selection. I'm going to leave mine on white. You can use this dialog box for lots of changes to your selection, but I just want to give it a slight feather. So now I can click and drag on the feather slider and watch how it affects my selection. The feather amount will vary depending on how soft you want your edge and also on the size of your photo, both in dimension size and resolution. For my selection, I like how it looks at 0.7 pixels. You can see the before and after by clicking on the Show Original box. So that's what my selection looks like before the feather, and that's what it looks like after. Once you're happy with your changes, click OK, and the dialog box will close, and the feather will be applied to your selection. Now I want to fill the pupil area with black but I want to do it on a separate layer so that I don't make any permanent changes to the original. In case I mess up and need to start at the beginning, my background layer will remain intact. So go to the Layers panel and click on the icon that looks like a piece of paper with a folded over corner. That's the Create a New Layer icon. Click on it and a new layer is added above the background layer. I can tell that the new layer is the active layer because it's highlighted in blue. So go to the Edit menu and choose Fill Selection. In the dialog box that appears, click on the Use field and choose Black from the drop-down menu. Then click OK to close the box and fill your selection with black. Now we can deselect to get rid of the marching ants by going up to the Select menu and choose Deselect. Well, we got rid of the weird color in the pupil, but now it kind of looks like a hollow eye or something. To make it look more realistic, we can add a reflection in the pupil. I'm going to turn off the visibility of our new layer by clicking on the eyeball next to it in the Layers panel. You can see in my original photo that there are white reflections in both eyes. I'm going to use them as a guide for where to add my reflections to the black pupils. If you don't see any reflections in your original that you can use for reference, you can still put some in. Just use the 2 o'clock position on both pupils and it will look natural. These reflections actually look like rectangles, but to make things easy, I'm going to make the new reflections round. So I'll go over to the toolbox again and click on the brush tool to make it active. Now go to the Tool Options and click on the Brush Preview to show the list of brushes. Again, don't worry about the brush size. Just choose any soft-edged round brush by double-clicking on it. Notice this time, unlike with the Selection Brush tool, the Brush Preview reflects the choice I made and it looks like a soft edge brush. I'm going to use the original reflection to size my brush for the new reflection. So I'll move the cursor over the reflection and I'll use the left and right bracket keys like we did earlier to make my brush about the same size as the reflection. That looks pretty close. Remember that we want to add the reflection to our new layer. 
So I'm going to turn the visibility back on by clicking on the eyeball next to it again. And I know that it's the active layer because it's blue. But now I can't see where exactly that original reflection was, so I'm going to temporarily lower the opacity of the new layer so that I can see below to the original layer. And I can do that by placing my cursor over the word opacity and then click and drag towards the left. And once I can see that reflection, I'll stop at that point. The brush tool uses whatever color the foreground color is to paint with. I want to paint with white, but right now, if I look at the foreground color, which is represented by this top square underneath the toolbox, you can see that it's black. So I'm going to click on it, and that brings up the color picker from which I can choose what color I want to make the foreground color. If I click inside the big square and then drag beyond the upper left corner, like that, it will set the foreground color to white. Then click OK to close the color picker and accept the change. Now if you look at the foreground color, it has changed from black to white. I'll put the cursor over the original reflection and click once. I want the reflection to be a little more intense, so I'm going to click a couple more times. And each time I click, it gets a little brighter and slightly bigger. And now we're done using the background layer as a reference, so I'm going to change the opacity for the new layer back to 100%. Now we need to do the same thing to the other eye. I'll go through the steps much quicker for that eye since I already explained everything pretty thoroughly. I'll go back to the toolbox and get the selection brush tool, size it to slightly bigger than the pupil, which it already is, and then click once to make my selection. Choose Refine Edge, give it a feather of 0.7, Click OK. Create a new layer. Fill the selection with black. And deselect. Now lower the opacity to see the original reflection. Make the brush tool active and choose a soft edged brush and then size it down to about the same size as the original reflection. Make sure that the foreground color is set to white and click a few times to create a reflection. Change the layer's opacity back to 100% and you're done. Let's go up to the View menu and choose Fit on Screen so we can see the whole photo. And here's a little trick if you want to see the before and after of a multi-layered photo. Just hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC as you click on the eyeball next to the background layer. That will turn the visibility off on all of the other layers. Click the eyeball again while holding down the Alt or Option key, and it will turn the visibility back on for the other layers, so you can see the before and after that way. And that wraps up this video on how to fix animals' eyes with Photoshop Elements. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.